let us know if you uh, do have any questions as we go through. But the, I just want to introduce myself, we'll introduce ourselves as the facilitators today, and then we'll get started on our presentation. My name is Tim Spielman. I'm the manager of academic and transfer advising. I've worked in the advising office for quite a while, but almost 15 years, and I've worked in higher education about 25, almost 25 years. I come to advising from an educational background. I actually went to college to be a history professor. Uh, and while I have never been a professor, I have taught history for quite some time. That's how I found myself working in the advising office. I enjoy helping students. And while it's not teaching history, it is, I think, teaching students about academic planning and teaching them some success skills. So let me turn this over to uh, Michelle and she'll introduce herself. Good morning, everybody. I'm Michelle Graham. I'm an advisor also in the Academic and Transfer Advising Center. However, as you can see, like most of us, I'm working from home. Um, I have been with Rock Valley for about two years, but worked previously for other community colleges and universities in the Chicagoland area. And I it happened to also be a career changer. I started my career in marketing and public relations. So if you have any questions about those fields, I could assist you, um, but I'm also a career changer. And so if you happen to be someone who is changing careers and wants to know a little bit about how to do that, I can assist you with that. So that's a little about me. I am now going to introduce my colleague, Hannah Anderson. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're doing well and that you enjoyed your 4th of July weekend. Um, I'm Hannah Anderson. I'm also one of the advisors at Rock Valley and I've been here for about a year and a half. Um, my background is in psychology and counseling. Um, so I wanted to work with the college student population with that. So if you need anything, just let me know and we'll be happy to talk either through email, phone while we're at home or in person once we're back on campus. And now I'll introduce you to Peggy Westerman. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. Hi, hey guys. Hope you're all doing well and staying cool. It's pretty warm outside. I'm with Academic and Transfer Advising as well, and um, I've been with uh, RBC since 2016. I started as an adult education, English as a second language instructor, um, and our instructional activities included not only language building skills, but academic and career planning instructional activities as well. And so I'm really excited to carry those experiences and those activities over to academic and transfer advising, helping you guys with your academic and career planning, goal setting and uh, uh, visions for your future. So looking forward to meeting all of you and you know we're gonna keep in touch via phone, email and uh, hopefully see some of you on campus as well. And I'll just uh, relay it back onto Tim. All right. Well, before we begin, I do want to start out with a little bit of a poll. Our focus today is on the transfer degrees, and I, I just want to start out with a poll just to see what you understand. So you should see that pop up on your screen, and you want to take a moment to read that and vote, if you may. Everybody has voted, so let me do that. So th these are the results of the polling. The nice thing about this is that you're all, you're all right. Technically, that's what the associate's degree is, all of those things, and you're gonna learn more about that as we go through our presentation today. So uh, Michelle will start out by talking a little bit about what these degrees are and are not. Okay, let me close up the poll so I can see. Again, my name is Michelle Graham. I am an advisor and uh, students come to Rock Valley College for a number of reasons. Um, most of you will come with the goal of working on your general education and some electives to prepare for a bachelor's degree. So the degree that you are going to complete is what we call a transfer degree. We have three transfer degrees at Rock Valley. We have the Associate of Arts, which is by and large what most students will be working on. We have the Associate in Science, that's for a very specific set of majors. 
and we have the associates in engineering science and you'll learn more about all three of these transfer degrees in a little bit. The main thing that I want to mention is again you're completing the first half of a bachelor's degree and it can prepare you for your major at a university. And so with that, of course, you're making a big transition. So we don't expect you to come in having everything figured out. But by your second or third semester, it's a good idea to start to look at what you might be interested in choosing as your major and what school you might be interested in transferring to. And we call that your transfer school. The other thing that I want to mention today is if you didn't know, we have uh, several career and technical education degrees. So sometimes students will come in interested in earning a college degree. In this occasion, they'll earn the Associates in Applied Science, but they'll be working on career and technical education programs. So things like our nursing program, our dental hygiene, aviation maintenance, automotive, manufacturing, engineering, technician, megatronics. These are programs that you can earn a college degree toward, and you can also know that you will be prepared to graduate and enter the workforce immediately in these target degrees. However, you may find that later on you do want to transfer and you do want to earn a bachelor's degree. You can transfer some of those courses, but it is going to have some limited transferability. Next. Thank you. So let's just talk real quick about what the benefits are of attending Rock Valley to earn your transfer degree. First off, you're going to earn 64 credits, maybe even more, towards bachelor's degree, which is typically about 120 credits. You're going to be able to um, have a very cost-effective tuition rate and you're going to be in a convenient location. You're going to be close to home, so you don't have all the expense of having to move and set up an apartment or move into a dormitory. You will complete a general education curriculum that can transfer as a whole package to most public and private institutions in Illinois, and it'll replace the gen ed curriculum at your transfer school. If you do choose to go out of state with general education credits, they are designed for transfer for a bachelor's degree, and we are an accredited institution. So they will transfer fairly easily. They will just have a different process where they'll look at those classes one by one. Finally, <clears throat> you will have a number of elective credits to complete. You can choose to use those electives to do the prereqs for your major, or many students come to us just not quite sure about what that major is going to be. And so we do have a number of career exploration classes that can help you look and see if you might be interested in a career in business, engineering, criminal justice, psychology, education, and other fields. So that's a great way to explore some, um, some majors and some career ideas. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Tim. So part of this degree, as, as you know from that poll, is, and what Michelle was just saying, is general education. In fact, that's the bulk of these transfer degrees, at least two of the transfer degrees. And a lot of students come here to take those because they, they want to take those here. Uh, sometimes they look at them and say, I want to get them out of my way, like they're an obstacle to this. You'll have biology majors saying, why am I taking a fine arts class? Or an English major saying, why am I taking a biology class? Or worse, a math class, why do I have to do that? And the reality is the liberal arts part of the degree, the general education part of that degree is an integral and very important part of the American bachelor's degree. Not every country has this component or it was fully developed part of this, but the word liberal is the important thing. That has a lot of different meanings and connotations, but in this context, liberal comes from the word libero or free or too free. It's about freeing your mind to think better. And to that end, we have developed a number of student learning outcomes. So as you're taking your general education classes and elective classes for that matter, you're going to learn skills, sometimes called transferable skills, that are going to apply in your profession, in your other classes. That's what you really should focus on when you're taking these. So you have, we have four of them. Analytic reasoning is about 
critical thinking. It's about how to think better. That's maybe, uh, they probably don't want me ranking these, but that's probably the most important one, to make you a better thinker. If you're a, a science major, taking those classes in the fine arts will allow you to think a little bit differently. Taking the science classes, if you are an art major or a theater major, will help you to understand the scientific method and thinking mathematically. This is gonna help you in other classes, but more importantly, it's gonna help you in your life and your career, because you're gonna to have to think in different ways and be aware of different ways of approaching problems. Communication is probably the most obvious one. This is about writing and speaking better. You're obviously gonna learn those in your English composition courses and your speech course, but you're also gonna learn those in many of your classes. You're gonna do papers and presentations in all sorts of classes, and the hope is that you're going to develop your ability to communicate better, learn how to do research and, and do better thinking with the first one and apply it to your communication. Global awareness and responsibility is really about your place in the world and the community. It's about diversity, it's about your understanding your cultural biases. So as you are trying to interact with the rest of the world, you're going to be able to take responsibility for who you are. You'll have a better understanding of the world. You'll get that in different ways. Uh, your social science classes will be the most obvious for some of that, but you're gonna learn about environmental ethics in your environmental science class and probably other biology classes, or you might even take philosophy 252, the environmental ethics class. Personal responsibility is about understanding your own biases and taking responsibility for understanding the world from your own perspective. Now, sometimes your biases might be correct, but you need to understand yourself. And this is what you're going to get among other things from this. So once you finish your associate's degrees, you're going to have developed these skills and that's what you really should focus on as you're working through your general education classes. Hannah's gonna talk a little bit about uh, the, the general education in, in a more technical manner. So Hannah, go ahead and take it away. Hello again. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Illinois Articulation Initiative. And when we talk about this in the future during any appointments we might have, we're probably just gonna use the acronym of IAI. So what this is, is a state initiative that defines the type and number of courses that comprise a general education core curriculum. So it's basically the classes that we want you to complete for your general transfer degree that will also transfer well to other schools so that you can move on and get a bachelor's degree or higher. They're going to be for specific categories, so that's what is listed here. Um, classes in communications, humanities, fine arts social sciences, life and physical sciences, mathematics, and then at least one non-Western culture course. And we'll make sure that we can help you out with picking these classes from our IAI sheet that we use as a reference. And we'll make sure that they match up with what you're gonna major in in the future or what you're interested in studying. And then for the elective courses, those won't come from the IAI sheet. They will just come from our catalog in general. But we'll again help you out with picking those so that they're transferable to the school that you hope to transfer to in the future. And the next slide is gonna show um, different institutions that have the IAI and will transfer well from Rock Valley. But if you don't see the school that you plan to transfer to, please don't worry because we have very good transferability both in and out of state. And we can make some um, plans as far as where you want to go and make sure things are on track. So just keep in mind that the IAI exists and we'll explain it more in person or over the phone email if we have an appointment with you. So thanks for that. And I'm going to pass it over to Peggy to talk about the Associates of Art. But before Peggy starts, let me give another poll out there just to see how many of you have narrowed down your choices a little bit here. Go ahead and vote on this. Okay, hi again, everybody. Thanks, Hannah. So the Associate of Arts degree, uh, in short, AA, um, that's a, like the, was mentioned earlier, one of our more popular ones. It's pretty flexible in terms of classes you can take and what you can apply it to. But um, let's look at some of the majors that traditionally fit this one. So traditionally, when you major in the fine arts areas, the disciplines areas, you're likely to follow the Associate of Arts. So if you're following majors in English, philosophy, history, um, music, and geography, but also in business areas such as accounting, finance, and marketing, or human resources, this is a very useful degree to follow. So those are some of the majors that you could use. 
And then how it's broken down is into basically two uh, sections. There's the IAI section area that um, Hannah mentioned earlier, where you're gonna fit those IAI classes and uh, take care of those gen ed requirements. And then the second half is the electives area. So let's look at some of those um, specific IAI sections. So first you have the communications area. You need nine credits for that. And that's where you're gonna find your uh, English composition one, English composition two and fundamentals communication. And that area is gonna be pretty um, across the board with the other transfer degrees too. So if you think of it, it's kind of like your baseline. You're gonna need your uh, comp one and comp two and fundamentals of communication. And then the next part, humanities, fine arts, you're gonna see that sprinkled around the other transfer degrees as well, but it's gonna be more heavily emphasized in the associative arts. So for the AA and the humanities, fine arts, you're gonna need 12 credits of humanities, fine arts classes. And those can be um, philosophy classes, lit classes, um, music history classes, those areas specifically. And then for social sciences, you're gonna need 12 credits of that as well of IAI social sciences. And those classes um, can be sociology, psychology, history, uh, economics, anthropology, sociology areas. And then with the life and physical sciences, you need seven to eight credits of that area. That would include for the life sciences, biology classes. And then for the physical sciences can include uh, chemistry, physics, and uh, those areas as well. And with the AA, you just need one lab in either life or physical sciences area. And we can help you maneuver around, see which one would be more um, applicable to you in your degree track. And then with the mathematics area, you need three to five credits there. So you need at least one IAI mathematics class. Um, and that can depend on what direction you wanna go into. So for example, if you're going into nursing or business, elements of statistics would be helpful. Also a calculus class for business majors would be very useful. And then for the second half of the degree, the electives area, um, that's going to be about 20 plus credits of electives. And you can choose IAI classes for this area, but this would be, is the area where it'd be really beneficial for you to reach out to the catalog more broadly and bring in uh, classes that you wouldn't see in the IAI sheet, but would be of particularly good benefit to you. So for example, if you were um, looking at majoring in the business fields, uh, accounting classes, business classes would be very uh, beneficial for you to take. Although they're not on the IAI sheet, don't be distressed. That's where you get to bring in those non-IAI classes within the electives area. And we'll help you find those and um, pick out which ones that would be specifically useful to you as part of the electives area is the STU 100 class. That's a very uh, helpful class. It's required for graduation for transfer degrees. And this is um, a class that you really get to know your degree track. There's a specific uh, assignment in there where you're going to track out your degree and create mapping activities. And you'd be working with us advisors. So it gives you a really helpful bird's eye view of what you'd be doing within your degree and where it can take you. So going back to the IAI area, if you're a little, um, you know, wondering what classes would be specifically useful, you know, that's why we're here and we're really looking forward to helping you choose which ones that would be um, most in sync with your degree track. So for example, if you were going into like pre-law, philosophy class focusing on logic would be very helpful for you. If you are going into nursing areas, um, you could do like anthropology, intro to bioanthropology and archeology. span That would be uh, very helpful in that area too. And um, looking at those areas would help you see your degree and help you maneuver around how to track where you wanna go with this and sp pick specific classes that would be helpful in the direction you wanna go into. And pretty much many of the classes are pretty flexible. So if you decide to change, we can help you uh, figure out where to fit those classes. So if you change midstream, no worries, we can help you with the tracking of that piece. So after the Associate of Arts, we're gonna take a look at the Associate of Science now. And for that, we're going to uh, head back to Hannah. Hello again. Let me share the results from oh, that thanks. quiz, that poll. Looks like 
three quarters of you do know what degree you're pursuing, but not all of you do. And about half of you are, are undecided in terms of where you want to transfer. So that's one of the things that you'll want to plan as you're going there. But let me turn this back over to Hannah. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly discuss the Associates of Science, which is our other transfer degree that we have at Rock Valley. And majors that are associated with this degree are generally in the science field. So things like chemistry, biology, physics, pre-med tracks, pre-dental tracks, um, sometimes computer science. So just make sure to check in with us and let us know what your planned major is if you know it. And we can just make sure that you're on the right path with which transfer degree would be best for you. And a lot of the requirements for this degree are gonna be similar to the Associates of Arts. So I'm just gonna quickly mention some of the differences. Basically, you just need a little bit less of the humanities, fine arts, and a little less of the social sciences, and then a little bit more credits in life and physical sciences and in mathematics. But we wanna make sure that you always pick the correct classes to put into those categories based on what you plan to go into next. So just always check in with us throughout your time at Rock Valley and we'll make sure that everything is good to go and that you're on the right page and that there's no issues later when you're ready to graduate and move on to your next step. So the other quick thing that's a little bit different is just that there's less electives needed for the AS and there's 19 instead of 21. But again, just check in with us and we'll help you through the process. And we're gonna talk about engineering science now with Tim. Yeah, so the Associate of Engineering Science is similar to the other degrees, except for obviously it's for somebody who wants to major in engineering. It's close to the Associate of Engineering Science, but one of the important differences is that it doesn't necessarily finish the general education requirement of the university. It's the only transfer degree that is not designed specifically to do that. Although the Associate of Science, in some cases, it doesn't work always either. But it is designed for engineering majors at certain schools. In many schools, you may be better off with the Associate of Science, and that's something that you would want to talk to an advisor about, which, which degree, the Associate in Engineering Science or the Associate in Science is better for you. There'll be a lot of common elements, but they may not always take all the engineering classes. But the Associate of Engineering Science has the same communications classes, the English Composition 1 and 2, and the speech requirement. But one of the important differences is that it only has nine credits total in the social sciences and humanities. It doesn't really matter which ones you take. It doesn't have the same way that you have to take a certain number in this area and a certain number in that area. But you do have to make sure that you have a non-Western culture course. And the degree itself recommends that you take two classes in one area. Many universities do want you to take economics, so we encourage students to take macro and microeconomics, economics 110 and 111, and then a modern history course, either Asian history, Eastern civilization, or modern world history. So you can do other classes, but those tend to work pretty well, particularly for the schools that take this degree. You will also have to take the student development 100, but the core of this degree is the math and science. You're going to take calculus one, two, three, and differential equations. Many of you will not start out with calculus. Uh, you need to place into it, or you need to have taken perhaps dual credit classes, but those classes will not count toward this degree. They may be necessary, you may have to build up to calculus, but one thing to keep in mind is that this degree can be a little difficult to finish in two years if you don't start out in calculus, or you're pretty close to it, and then you're also willing to take summer classes, then you can usually finish this in two years. But it is a challenging degree to fit in because of the math sequencing and the science that builds on that math. You'll also need general chemistry, which assumes that you've had high school chemistry and college algebra. You also need a two semester physics sequence, which is calculus based. You need a CIS 276, an introduction to a C++ programming class. Intro to engineering, which is one of those kind of exploratory courses that students should take their first semester if possible to, to see if engineering is what fits for them. And then there are 10 credits or more of electives. And those you will pick based on the type of engineer you're planning to be. Civil engineering might differ from mechanical engineering or aerospace engineering. So you do want to be aware of that and we can help you in the advising office select those. This degree was essentially created with Northern Illinois University in mind. 
that's why it, it doesn't necessarily transfer everywhere. It's not necessarily the best degree to go to the U of I with, for example. But if you're going to go to NIU, particularly if you want to take advantage of the mechanical engineering partnership, they offer that degree on our campus in Rockford or any of their other majors in engineering down in DeKalb, this degree fits perfectly with that. It was designed with a conversation with NIU, uh, so we created the, the degree and designed the requirements for that particular goal. If you're interested in doing the Associate in Engineering Science and then going to NIU, whether in DeKalb or especially if you want to go into Rockford, this is a degree that has a lot of support in the community. As you probably know, Rockford is very industrial. That's what the bulk of our economy is. And so a lot of businesses are supporting this program by allowing students to intern. And you can start your internship once you've taken some of the math and some of the basic engineering classes, not just the intro to engineering, but maybe one in AutoCAD or something like that. And there are a lot of scholarships available for students interested in this, both through Rock Valley College and NIU. The hope is that once you finish this and finish your bachelor's degree from NIU, you'll be able to stay in the area and enhance the workforce. And the placement is quite high. NIU essentially places nearly 100% of their students wherever they want to be placed. So it's a great field to get into. And so if you are interested in engineering, definitely look into this program. So that's the third of the three transfer degrees for us. And that probably answers some of your questions, but I'm sure that there are more questions that you have. But I do want to give one final poll here. This is kind of a concluding poll, just to give, give us a sense of, of what you learned today. So if you want to answer that, and then we will finish up and, and open it up to questions. Hi again, everybody. So like what Tim said, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to us. Um, you can ask us now or contact us later as well. Uh, we really encourage you to schedule an appointment uh, for longer questions and you know questions that may pop up. Um, we're located on the second floor of the Student Center on Mulford Road, the main campus. Um, but because of the current COVID event right now, we really uh, emphasize that you guys touch base with us via email or phone first so we can create an appointment for you. Um, the way to reach us is rvc-ata at rockvalleycollege.edu or 815-921-4100. So please reach out to us there and uh, we can help you if you want to uh, come visit on campus. But because of uh, the situation, uh, student access to campus is uh, still a little uh, in flux right now. So please reach out to us at those contact options. And the emphasis we really want to put out there is to build a partnership with an advisor so we can help support you with uh, semester check-ins and goal setting, uh, registration times, academic evaluations and transfer planning. So we're really here to help you from your first semester all the way to when you are ready to graduate. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us and we really uh, stress that students come and see us at least once a semester so we can stay posted on what you're doing and help you with any changes or issues as we go along and to help you with your goal setting options. So thank you very much for all your uh, participation and uh, please reach out to us. So feel free to ask any questions you have. Yeah, and go ahead and ask those questions in the, in the chat if you'd like and, and we will monitor that. And a popular question that just comes to mind for me, Tim, is how long a student may take um, with the Associate of Arts, maybe, or the Associate of Science. It can be done in two years, but, uh, and, and that's a good question because a lot of students just sort of say, what's a full-time student? And they'll take 12 credits, which is a full-time student. But if you recall from what we talked about earlier, the degrees are 64 credits. And if you multiply 12 by, by four, you're going to get 48 credits. So you do need to take a fairly heavy load if you want to do it in two years, usually 16 credits a semester. But it could take longer if you test into developmental courses. So if you need to take uh, beginning algebra and English 99, those classes don't count toward the degree, but it does allow you to build your skills. But it could add time on to that, if, especially if you don't take summer classes. I just want to add something to that. I think it's really important for students to know that 
everyone goes at the pace that makes the most sense for them to be successful. So even though we've always thought about this as a two-year degree, you may find with your family situation and your work situation that two and a half or three years is the best time for you to take. But you really do have um, a few years, in fact, up to seven years before you would even have to think about changing catalogs. But you have up to seven years when your degree requirements will stay the same. And so what's really important, and a lot of times people will take a little bit less credits their first semester, because if you are nervous, if you, are, if you wanna get used to making the transition to college, it is different, that might work for you too. You always have summers. See any questions in the chat? So my question for you, Tim, is: Are these all the advisors? No, yeah, that's a good, uh, good question. I was going to announce that at the beginning, but I neglected to. Turned it over to you too quickly. These are this is the bulk of our department, but we do have other advisors. So as you are looking to make an appointment, uh, you don't have to make an appointment with us necessarily. Uh, you can request somebody. Uh, in addition to our advisors that you're seeing today, uh, we have a few other advisors. Nancy Steinmeier Dietz, uh, she has a long experience in higher education, though she's only been here a little over a year. Uh, she has a counseling background, but she's very good with a very broad variety of majors and interests. Uh, Betty Villalobos Hallman, she is the athletic advisor, but you don't have to be an athlete necessarily to see her. You can request her. Uh, she also is fluent in Spanish. So if you are a Spanish speaker or you might be bringing family members that want to ask questions and, and they're more comfortable Spanish, uh, request Betty. And then Cornell Bondurant, he is our, our other advisor and he is, uh, among other things, he is the advisor of the Black Student Union. So he's active in student organizations. Uh, he has a background in social work. So especially if you're interested in social work, he's a good one to talk to, uh, but he's very good with a variety of majors as well. So thanks for asking that, Michelle. Any chat questions? All right, well, thank everybody for participating today. Looks like we had a handful of participants and. We hope to see you in the advising office. And as Peggy was alluding to, we were kind of up in the air. It looks like we will start taking a few in-person appointments at, by the end of this month, but we will be helping people over phone and email. And if, if you prefer, we could have a Zoom meeting as well. So thanks again and have a good day.